Hello everybody, so well, welcome to the channel. Uh, so today, uh, and I've been planning this for a few weeks, just haven't really had the time, is we are going to be building a Raven coin rig, um, stroke ergo um, rig uh, from scratch. So we've got all the main pieces here. I thought we'd just do a kind of a build together, um, work, work through all the key components and how to set them up. Um, through to actual mining so it's um, so yeah so look you know I thought what I'd do is lay all these things out we can sort of look at them quickly just discuss them um, talk about prices and um, yeah so look I think just starting on the left here we have a motherboard an MSI Z390 great motherboard for mining um, you know the cost of mining motherboards now really skyrocketed so some of these sort of mid-range um, gaming motherboards are fantastic you know it's got five slots on there but with M.2 conversions um, and using splitters you can get up to 11 possibly 12 cards in this um, I'm running rigs at the moment with nine ten cards in there um, but I'm pretty sure we can do another card or two possibly but you know running 10 GPUs on a on a rig is is pretty decent going so so yeah so that's the um, MSI Z390 motherboard um, next key thing is this CPU so this is an LGA 115 um, socket it's an i5 9400F um, obviously go to PC part picker I'll put a link down below to make sure um, compatibility or you can go to the to the website of the uh, motherboard manufacturer aka MSI and check for compatibility really important to do that um, before you spend your hard-earned dosh um, I've got some thermal paste there um, worth getting for building rigs this actual um, CPU and fan does have pre-applied thermal paste um, squares but look it's worth having that handy anyway so not quick for this build but I just wanted to show you guys that next thing is some RAM this is some G skill Aegis um, 8 gig RAM um, you don't need a lot of RAM for mining um, you can probably go as low as 4 gig RAM but I like to have one stick of um, 8 gig in there um, that's just my personal preference um, a um, solid state hard drive 240 gig Kingston um, I've got these I think on all my mining rigs really reliable nothing fancy but they do the job um, if I just scoot across here then just to get the base rig build done is you need a uh, good power supply um, again I've used these extensively on all my rig builds um, love them um, the Aorus so this is the, the Gigabyte Aorus P850W um, so it's 850 watts um, ATX power supply don't get this confused with the Gigabyte um, 850 the non-Aorus model it's which are the 1 don't get this confused with the Gigabyte 850 the non-Aorus models which are not very good um, there's been a lot of, um, I guess, reviews of them on YouTube with exploding um, parts and stuff. But this is a very different animal. Great um, uh, ATX PSU. I have rigs running two of these side by side. Um, I think with the Raven Coin rig, I am actually going to try um, adding a server PSU. But look, for the base build we're going to do now, let's just get started with one PSU. Let's keep it simple. Um, look, the all-important um, piece, I guess, for any mining rig is a... Um, a GPU. I've got a 3060 Ti limited hash rate GPU here. Um, so obviously with Raven, if you're not aware, that is not impacted by the limited hash um, that, that Nvidia have put on a lot of their cards now. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got a few of these cards and some other um, uh, limited hash rate 3060 Ti's. Um, I think they're really good value. Um, if I'm looking at all the limited hash rate cards, I think these are great value. If you pick these up for about $1,000, um, you're doing, I think, pretty well. I think prices are only going to rise there. Just my personal opinion, um, not financial advice. Uh, don't go out and spend money you can't afford on GPUs, but I just think for $1,000, I was quite happy to buy that. So other things you need for our base rig build is uh, Ethernet cable. Let's connect to the internet, unless you have a Wi-Fi motherboard, but um, Ethernet cable worth having on standby. Um, on off switch, um, look some of the fancy motherboards have an on off switch on them, I don't know if you can see this rig over here, um, it's got on off switch on it, um, but this uh, motherboard doesn't, so we've just got these um, on off switches you can pick up on eBay. Um, now not critical for this build, but let's just put it into the arena, because um, if we're going to get serious about mining on um, this is your first rig, you will need to um, pick up some of these uh, GPU risers lots of different versions of these um you know you can find these all day long on ebay so i won't go into too much technical detail now but yeah you, you'll need some gpu risers and also a splitter cable again 
easy to get these on eBay um, or other websites. Um, so eight pin, so it's eight pin female to two eight pin males. Again, more for when you're scaling up your, your rigs, but yeah, worth starting to think about what you need to buy ahead of your base bill. Um, so yeah, let's quickly go through prices. Um, motherboard, um, look, prices vary, but I would say between, for this one, uh, 105 to about 135 Aussie dollars. Um, CPU is about two hundred dollars. Um, look, thermal paste. You know, five bucks you can pick up some some thermal paste. This is a Cuda Master um, uh, thermal paste. Uh, the DDR4 RAM was just over fifty dollars. Same again for the SSD, about fifty bucks. Ethernet cable, uh, let's say five dollars. These are a dollar each. I bought a pack of ten for for less than ten dollars. Uh, as I said before. The GPU, thousand Aussie dollars. Um, the PSU, look, the, you used to be able to get these for about one hundred and twenty dollars delivered, but more realistically now, I think they've had a, um, an MSRP um, or RRP uh, price rise. They're more like one hundred and fifty now, so I'd say about one hundred and fifty dollars for those. Um, Rises, you know, you pay, you know, if, if if you can bargain hard on eBay and things like that, you can get another seven dollars. But I would budget around ten dollars for a GPU riser, and these splitter cables are two or three dollars each. You normally buy packs of five or ten. So, so let's just go through very quickly to get. Let's think about without a GPU, what's a base um, rig build? So let's say one hundred and twenty um, plus two hundred is three hundred and twenty. Three twenty-five. Um, actually, listen, like, like three twenty-five. 375, 425, um, 430. Um, let's ignore these things for now. Um, 430, that's just a dollar, so that's fine. 430, um, 580, so $580. So let's say 600 bucks would get you your base rig built that you can start adding GPUs on. And your GPU, like I said, was $1,000. So 1600 bucks will get you up and running, mining Ravencoin. Um, and then after that, you really just need to buy the GPUs and obviously then some risers and splitter cables. So, so I think what we'll say here is, you know, a good guide will be sixteen hundred dollars um, or fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars to get your base rig up and running. And then really, it's up to you how fast you want to add cards to to, to your rig. Um, you know, and you can take that your own pace. You know, I'll, I'll recommend it anyway. Get a rig up and running. See if you like it. See if it's for you. You know, do, do, does it, um, you know, impede on your family life, your work-life balance? Um, have you got the energy to deal with um, rigs going down at one o'clock in the morning? Um, or, you know, if you're having a beer with your buds on a Saturday afternoon. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's I think it's good advice there. You know, don't get all in. You know, get started, get feel for it, and then see if mining is for you. But I will say, it is good fun. Um, so look what we'll do we'll we'll clear some space here um, I'll probably turn the fans off in the background here um, so you can hear me a little bit better and yeah we'll, we'll get started on on the initial build so yeah just uh, hold on there guys and we'll be back in three two one all right so we're back guys um, so I've cleared away um, most of the other bits and pieces and so what we're going to start with is um, putting the CPU um, in, and then we'll put the, the cooler and heatsink on top of that, and then we'll put the RAM in. And look, that that's I think good step one. So yeah, let, let's let's get on with it. So it's, um, so I've got you guys up there. Hopefully you can see. Um, I have left my rigs on just here, so hopefully the noise of the fans is not too loud. Um, right, so let's get the motherboard out. Um, you sometimes get some other little bits and pieces. Um, also, we don't need the, the little front plate there. It's not going to the desktop. Um, but I will take the SAT cable out because we will use that um, later to connect the um, the solid state um, uh, um, hard drive. So, it's, um, so we'll, 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 we'll just take that out. And what I'm going to do, and this is my uh, top tip, is. Just use the um, the box from the um, motherboard as, as kind of your base for doing the initial build. Um, that'll also help later when we um, put the graphics cards in, and it'll just give you a little bit of space to sort of work around. So it's um, yeah. So let's um, let's get the motherboard out. I'm just going to quickly. Uh, okay, good. Right, so let's get the motherboard out. So basically, that's really what I said. We're going to do a 
dedicated Raven Queen rig or, or similar coins to Raven Queen. Um, if it's Conflux or um, Ergo, that's all good. Um, I'm going to initially set this up on Nice Hash, and Nice Hash will um, switch to the most profitable algorithm um, that it finds. Um, so that, that's quite useful. Um, I'm not saying Nice Hash is the best um, you know software to use you know I think high OS is definitely where I'm moving to but nice hash gives a nice easy entry to get things up and running so, so yeah so here's the motherboard um, this is the MSI uh, Z390 plus um, it's an OEM motherboard so there's no fancy boxes um, uh, but what I like about this motherboard is it's got five slots plus two um, M2 slots you can convert that I have found if you convert this, this second slot, it does knock off this PCIe slot. So what I normally do is I'll do five plus this one here, and um, at present I've loaded up to, I think, 10 cards on this type of motherboard on another rig. I think you can get up to definitely 11, and 12 is a question mark. Um, so that's something we'll, we'll try later. So, so look, first things, guys, we've got, yeah, we've got another board out. Um, let's open up our um, to push up there. We'll open up our, our um, CPU. So we'll just get this side here. And look, some CPUs come with a heat sinking fan. Some don't. This one does. Um, I am doing some other builds um, where I've. So this is a uh, an i5 9400F. And it's LGA1151. I have brought, um, I, I'm going to try some Z590 motherboards, uh, and I've actually brought some i3 10 series um, Intel chips for that. So, yeah, we'll give that a try, see how that goes. But, but I'm sticking with a tried and trusted combination here, which is the Z390 Plus motherboard MSI and the um, 9400F um, CPU. So, yeah, so we've got the heat seeking here. Um, one good thing about the, these heat sinks is they do come with a little bit of um, uh, pre-applied thermal paste, which is great. And this is a, um, a pop-in um, uh, like screws for the um, to go to the motherboard. Some you can actually do get you know traditional screws that, that you screw in. So it's, um, yeah, so so we got we got the CPU out. We've got the um, the heat sink and fan out and I'll also open up the uh, the RAM as well. So this is a, a G Skill Aegis uh, 8 gigabyte uh, RAM stick. Um, specifically it's F43200C16S. So it's kind of a uh, not quite the lowest range. You know you can get um, I think there's two triple six um, uh, model number, but yeah, this is like a couple steps up from the bottom of the range, and I've, again, I've used them all on other rigs, and it's working quite well. So, so right, so let's. Um, what you need to do first is um, this is like a protective cover for the um, where the CPU goes in. So what, what you want to do, and it's just got some CPU um, sort of housings have a clip on each side. This is like one clip, so it's just a matter of just pressing that down slightly, pulling it out, and lifting that off. Let's try this. Take the cover. Um, hang on to that. Um, if you ever sell um, or you store your motherboard, you'll want to keep this. Um, again, it's useful. It's got LGA 115 on there, so that's good. So we're going to get the, the CPU out. So key thing with the CPU is you want to watch where the little triangle is here. So if I can just bring it up here and show you guys, so this is, I'm sure we can focus it. So there's a little triangle there. See and what you want to make sure is you orientate the cpu um it's here look there's this little marker there so you know that you want to get the cpu um with that triangle coming down into that um corner that it, it's shown you there so it's um so we'll just get the cpu out again with the intel cpus the pins are on the motherboard and you've got i guess touch points here on the, on the CPU. Um, with the AMD chips, um, it's the other way around. You've, you've sort of got the, the, the flat bits in the motherboard and, and the pins, the spiky bits in, in the CPU. So 
Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do, we're just going to orientate this around the right way. Um, there's also some useful little, you can see here, there's a couple of indents there. And let me just try and zoom you guys in a little bit down here so you can see. Um, there's a couple little indents you can like see there, which will match in the, see the indents at the very top of the CPU up here. So there's a few little things just to guide you, just to make sure we put it in the right way. Obviously, it's quite important that we're not ramming the uh, CPU into the wrong the wrong way, um, you know, because you know we don't want to damage our equipment. So I'm just going to carefully drop that on there. That looks good. Brilliant. So, so that's on. And then what we're going to do then, we're just going to put the housing back over. underneath and like that and it's actually quite a firm amount of pressure it puts down on the CPU so it's um yeah so that that locks it in um and then what we're going to do is get our fan and heat sink now if you get a if you get a different um motherboard CPU combo you so you might not get a, a fan a heat sink and fan with it um so you can obviously buy that again uh, I always recommend using the PC part picker or go to the manufacturer's website to check out um, the compatibility for your, for your items. Um, obviously, if you're going to do this particular combination, then you can just follow what I've been doing. So, but uh, what I was going to say is, if you do need to buy a separate heat sinking fan, you might not get thermal paste. So, um, what you'll want to do is, is um, I showed earlier in the, in the video, is just to make sure you, you, you buy yourself some thermal paste. It's literally, you inject yourself a few spots out onto the um, the bottom of the heatsink, and then you'll just put it on top of the CPU. So yeah, so look, the CPU, like this is quite a basic one, um, so don't need to worry too much around orientation. Um, so what we will do is, look, I don't think it makes a massive amount of difference, but I was just checking another rig to see which way around I had the fan, more to see which way than the wire ago. Now, the CPU fan is here, see there's pump, and CP, CPU there, let me just make sure, yeah. So, so down here, there's pump and CPU, so I was just checking which way around the wires would go. It's, it's, it's more just, I think, for cable management. Um, do I do it there? Um, or maybe there? Um, or I think what I've done on another rig is I've got it here, and sort of coming around like that, which I reckon we'll do that again, you know? Stick with what we know, if anyone, uh, for this specific um, heat sink has a more preferred way to see, see here, look, I'll probably that go in there. That's what I was thinking then, it will go around. Oh, oh, I've actually dropped it on and the, um, it's funny, the, the thermal paste has actually um, sort of grabbed a little bit already. So you know what, this is where it's going. So. So what we need to do now is we just need to get these um, screws in, and they just literally just press on down through. So we just need to find where the hole is. There we go, like that. I, I normally do opposite sides. So that side will come across here and we'll go. So I've got it on a box, which is I like to do, but it's also you don't get a lot of underneath pressure. So you might just want to put your hand underneath and then just push it through. So and then this one. Oh. Thank you. 
little, just, there's a little, you can just hear a little click when you do it. I, I always get quite nervous because it feels like you put so much pressure down on the, uh, down on the equipment, but I think these things are quite robust, but still, I, I do like to be reasonably cautious when I'm putting things, um, the rig together, so, so I might just, I think I'm gonna just wrap that, yeah, probably gonna be the smartest way actually, to be honest, but, um, see, so yeah, again, I don't wanna get the wire, so let's, so we'll, what we'll do, that we'll, we'll connect our, the units have clips in, and then we'll just put that around there. Um, I don't know, there probably is a better way to do it, to be honest, like, yeah, because I probably wouldn't be using that clip, but I think we'll just put that around there. That'll all be good, you know, so not stress too much. All right, great, so the CPU is in, nice and secure, the heat sink's connected, and it's got the thermal paste on it. Fans in and it's clipped in. Um, seems to be pretty solid. And so let's do the RAM, guys. So again, pretty straightforward. Um, check always check your um, motherboard instructions for where the um, for where the RAM goes. Let's get this out. So this particular uh, RAM, where are we? There's normally a little, um, here we go, so here. Let's try and zoom you guys in. So see down here, look, there's, um, it says the DIM1, sorry, uh, DIM A1, DIM A2, DIM B1, DIM B2. So if you if you read the this motherboard instructions, and I'll just shortcut what it says for you, is if you've got one stick of RAM, it goes into the DIM A2 slot. So it goes into the second slot here. Always make sure your middle gap there lines up with the bit sticking up in the middle, because if you do it that way around, it won't go in. Um, so what we do, just get it into the slots, make sure that the middle bit's lined up nicely. And again, it needs quite a bit of firm pressure, so I'm just gonna lift it up, my fingers underneath, and we'll try and just that into there. In. Brilliant. So once you get it in, the, the, the clips will sort of self grab um, and secure it in. So yeah, that, that looks good, guys. So you can see that it's in nice and secure. The clips of when you push it in enough, the clips will just self um, come up and clip. So, guys, great progress. So, you know, I would say, you know, just over 10 minutes, um, and you can probably do it in five. We've got two of the major components in, so it's um, good, good start, guys. Um, we what I'll do is I'll just clear up these bits and then we'll come back for. Um, I guess the next stage. So we'll come back in three, two, one. All right, next stage, guys. We are going to get some power into our uh, rig. So, yeah, you, you would have seen earlier um, the the PSU we're going to use is the the Gigabyte Aorus AP850GM. Um, I've got a separate video unboxing that and just having a, a bit of an overview of that PSU and some links um, just to tell you a little bit more about that. So yeah, so what we're gonna do, we, we, we've unboxed it. The, the, there's a the basic unit, really nice. I've used a lot of these um, on other rigs. It's got uh, up to five um, PCIe stroke CPU um, output power um, there. So, uh, and what we're gonna do now is we just wanna get two things. Um, power from here into the, the motherboard slot here, which is a 24 pin, uh, motherboard uh, power and then we want to get um, power to the CPU which is via this um, a pin slot here so so what we'll do um, again what I love about this um, particular PSU is it comes with a lot of cables um, so uh, what we do is yeah so m most of the PCIe cables you get there's quite a few of them have PCIe on them we don't need them right now so we'll put them to our side so um, so and the 8 pin that doesn't have um, 
So you see here, there's an eight pin here, which doesn't have PCIe on it. That's our CPU um, power. So you get two of these in this kit. So I'm gonna put that one there. Um, let's just find the other one. Um, so I can show you. So that's PCIe, you can see there, it's got PCI written on it. Um, that doesn't, yeah, so, so basically, and so some of the newer motherboards now have um, 8 plus 4, 8 plus 6, 8 plus 8. So motherboards are sort of becoming like some of the bigger GPUs as they're getting more and more power slots, which is kind of fine, but generally for mining, the less, you know, uh, power in cables, it just helps with cable management and you can actually, in a way, if you've got the capacity, feed more, um, you know, GPUs or things if, you, if you're not committed to putting so many cables in, in certain um, components. So, so anyway, the, the Z390 has got... Um, uh, an eight pin slot which is great so so what we'll do let's unwrap this and I think what we'll do because the power is down this end we'll we'll, we'll just slide the motherboard up there we'll we'll drop actually what I do look that well, actually no no I won't actually I was, I was gonna put it up that way so you could see where I'm putting it in but it's got the switch there, which is a bit silly if I rest on that. But anyway, I'll, I'll do it here. So, so, so with the CPU, this has got uh, five. So these are these are kind of you can use them interchangeable. Um, they're quite standard on this on this unit. It's got um, five eight pin, um, uh, I guess, out power slots, um, which you can use for PCIe or CPU. So. Um, so, so what you might end up doing is having one for the CPU and four available for PCIe for GPU power. Or again, you might have a, a motherboard which needs more than uh, an eight pin. So you might use two for CPUs and three for, um, for, for PCIe GPU powers. Now, if you're using a couple of connected PSUs, if one of your PSUs is powering up your motherboard, um, you may have the ability to use all five of these to power up um, GPUs. Again making sure that you're not going over the capacity of your PSU. I think the general guidance is, but everyone needs to be, um, you know, making their own decisions, is I try and keep my, um, the power that I'm using steady state at 80% of capacity, because if you ever get, um, you know, the rig's going a bit crazy, sometimes your um, mining software can reset the, um, the GPU configurations and you can go up to like full power. So, so I like to keep a 20% headroom there. So, so this is an 850. So I'll probably run it, I'll, I'll never run it, say, more than, say, about 700 steady states. That gives, gives me 150 uh, watts of, of, of headroom. So, so yeah, so let, let's, uh, let's plug this in. Look, with, with this one, uh, what you learn is, look, the, the connecting pins, you can only do one way, but one way I always like to be sure as well, the, the Japanese capacitors, as they call them, are always at the component end. So you always know that you want to be plugging the non capacitor end in, into your uh, PSU. So let's just do this um, here. Let's put, put it in there. That's good. So you can see that's in that nice click. And I'll just put it down there. And then, yeah, we'll just slot this in over here. So this will be pretty straightforward in there. Again, because I'm on the board, I will just put the fingers underneath it. And click in. And that's it. Power up for the CPU. Brilliant. The next cable we're going to look for is the pretty um, obvious and big 24 pin um, power for the for the motherboard. So you see here, it's um, the motherboard end is just um, one. I think it's one. Um, or is that joined? Yeah, it is just one continuous 24 pin there. But the um, the the other end has got 14 plus 10. Now the 14 plus 10 goes into our PSU. Again, just a little reminder, it's always a good visual for me when I'm just checking things before I switch things on. Always make sure that the capacitors, the Japanese capacitors, uh, are in the um, component and the motherboard end. So, and the non-capacitor end goes into our PSU. But the other way, the other thing with this is, there's not really a slot to put your whole 24 in one go. So it's actually separate here, 24 pin ATX. So let's just put this in. Try and do it one-handed. Oh, done that wrong. So doing these mining how-tos definitely gets your hand-eye coordination working well and doing things with one hand. So uh, there we go. There you go. So that clipped in nicely. Brilliant. 
put that back down again. And then we'll put this over here. Again, the cables are all, the, the, the reasonably robust the cables, you know, they, they've all been packaged up, so you can either straighten them out or twist them when, within reason, you know. You can do that. So let's just get it in there. And then we'll lift up the board and try. There we go. I find the, um, I always find the motherboard 24 pin is probably one of the toughest ones to get in and out. Um, you know, thankfully, we don't do it too often. I know it's clipped in, but yeah, I always find this one so tight. Um, I, might, I don't know if it's just this motherboard in particular. But I generally find they're all pretty tight. It's good, you know, they need to be secure, but, uh, you know, someone's getting worried about, you know, you could easily snap something off. Um, all right, brilliant. All right, so guys, we've done really good here. Um, oh, and the, I guess the other uh, initial essential piece of, of the power is you'll need your power to go from the ATX PSU um, in, in, into the main. So I'm, look, I'm, uh, actually what I'll do now, let, let's just, let's connect it in, but I'm not gonna put this anywhere near the live um, electricity connection yet. We've got more things to do before we start connecting things up in the real world. But anyway, we'll, we'll get this in here. So you can see here that we'll just get that in there. But like I said, we're not switching anything on yet. That's just going to sit nicely. Just going to dangle this down here, and we'll, we're just going to leave that as is for now. Um, and we'll be, you know, plugging in things a little bit later. So, so. cool. All right, good stuff, guys. We're, we're making really good progress here. So um, I might just pack this away and then we'll do the next steps in uh, yeah, three, two, one. All right, and we're back guys. So, so we've done really well so far. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna um, power, we're gonna attach our SSD um, via the SATA um, connection up here and we'll power it up. So you need to get power from your PSU into your solid state drive. We're gonna put the on off switch um, onto it and I'll show you exactly where that goes and um, and then yeah I've, I've got a, a PCIe um, uh, connector so we'll 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 put one so I'd, I'd always recommend doing initial rig build I personally like just to get things up and running get one GPU on there get it all um, you know commissioned working tweaked and then you can start adding your your GPUs and again I personally for me I like to add one or maybe two GPUs at a time and just build it up. Um, otherwise, as sometimes I find, you know, and maybe more because it's a this is going to be a Windows um, based um, rig, I guess, at least for now. I think Windows sometimes really doesn't like it when you throw too many new bits of hardware on all at once. Um, that's just my personal um, kind of experience. Um, but you know, I've seen people build rigs and fire up 12 GPUs at a time and it seems to work okay. So, you know, each their own. I think, you know, as I would just say is, you know, this is a, what I'm saying is a first rig build potentially. I would just put one on there to start with. So it's, um, yeah, so, so let's, um, let's open up the um, SSD, very basic one. It's a Kingston A400, 240 gigabyte. Um, so, you know, it does, it's, it's nothing flash, nothing fancy, but it, it does the job. And um, I've, I've found them um, very reliable. Um, so, you know, it's essentially just a, you know, Put your windows on there um, or any other software so so what we're going to need actually is the um remember the uh, sata cable that we actually had that came with the um motherboard there's two here there's, there's like a straight end the straight end or there's one with a 90 degree angle um so i think i'll probably use the 90 degree angle one only because that's also the way that the um the power is a 90 degree as well so you'll see here um the power that goes into the um, the SSD will be like a 90 degrees, so we can sort of keep a little bit of symmetry there. So, so yes, yeah, so what we do look is we will. So you've got to be very careful with these. They've got a length and a little 90 degree corner, so you want to make sure. See here, you match up there. You know, like the, these are. I've, I've never actually broken one, but they are reasonably fragile. So you hear that clicked in there, great. Um, 
let's get the the power in as well and then we'll we'll connect the power into the um the power supply unit the psu and and also into the motherboard so it's um so you don't need the SSD for the initial BIOS boot up, um, but look, you know, it's one of those things, you might just get it in. So again, here, look, you can see it's a longer version, but it's, it's straight line with a connector with a 90 degree. So you want to make sure you've got your 90 degree, see there, connecting in together. So it's, uh, so we'll just push this in. There you go. It doesn't click so much, but it just you can tell when it's sort of in pretty solid. Um, actually, I'm going to take that out. What I'm going to do, I've done it to the closest one to the PSU, but to give me a bit more uh, flexibility, so let's just take this out. So I'm going to show you how to put it in, take it out, and put it in. So, right. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do, this is, this is the end which goes into the PSU. So I'm actually going to get the furthest away SATA, just here. That, that was actually a Molex at the very end of this connector, and there's the, the furthest away SATA. So we'll just get that into there. Brilliant, all right, that's nice. So SSD is powered up and connected up there. So what we'll do now is we'll first come here, get our PSU, and underneath the, um, yeah, let's move that back a little bit. So underneath the 24 pin um, connectors for the, for the motherboard there's a six pin peripheral it's called so that's plugged into there so that's good clicked in and then what we'll do then is we'll just take the uh, ssd for little walkies um and we will drop this so i'm gonna the sata five six sata three four sata one two so i'm just gonna put it into sata one the bottom slot here Looking again, it's got the same 90 degree um, connection, so I'm just looking for that. Oh, yeah, it's in the wrong way. There you go, so in. Brilliant. So SSD is in. Great job. Let me just zoom in there so you can see I've got the power co connection down there into the, uh, into the SSD, and the SSD is connected over there into this. SATA one port into there. Cool. So what we're going to do now is you remember the couple dollar um, motherboard on off switch. You get more fancy ones, but you know it just needs to be practical. Um, it's got it's just a si very simple switch. Um, it's got positive, negative, red and um, black. Uh, I should call it here. Was it power? power switch SW um, now as I've done a few of these rig builds already and we know this motherboard I know that if we look through all these connections here it is over here this JFP1 and I know and there is a um, it's oh, it's really small uh, and look if you go for your manual you'll see it but it's it's kind of written out here what each of these do so you can see power plus minus but what i'll just tell you now uh because if you do this exact rig build it's the top row so the furthest away from the edge and, and the two there the first one is the red so let's get it now so if you go around this way you want the red on that side so on, on this side and uh, one-handed skills needed so basically let me just drop it in there so so there clips in so you can see there look let's try and zoom in there for you guys We've got it in there. So the red is on the, I guess, left there, and it's in the back row, so the, not the front row, and it's on the end too. So there's, there's actually not a pin. Um, so you see that on the front there's five pins, but on the back there's only four. So I've got on the, the 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 top right end pins there. So that's in, and that's a nice way then to look. Particularly when you're doing your, your new build, there's going to be quite a few on on off um, kind of switches. So that's good. Um, so yeah, what we do now, I'll just put you guys back out here. We'll just put a cable in for our um, first um, GPU. So this is going to be a, this is going to be a mining, uh, sorry, a Ravencoin rig or other, I guess, non-Ethereum rig. And I, I've actually um, purchased some um, 3060 Ti LHRs because, as you know, some of you may know. Um, some of the other 
uh, non-Ethereum mineable coins are not um, impacted by the LHR um, restrictions that NVIDIA have put on some of the GPUs, mainly uh, to block Ethereum. It does have impact on other coins. I'm not going to do that now, but basically this rig, this will be a Raven coin rig using some LHR cards. Um, so, brilliant. So I think we'll take a little stop there and then we'll come back and we'll get the GPU in and think about firing this, uh, this rig up. So we'll come back in, yeah, three, two, one. So we're back. So um, yeah. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're getting close to initial um, fire up and get into BIOS. Um, so a couple of things is I've just got the power here. So I just got a power cable. Um, hey, these are really great. I highly recommend for mining. You get yourself one of these. eBay, uh, fifteen bucks, I think, or maybe maybe a little bit less. Um, 12, Twelve, maybe twelve bucks. Um, just to monitor your power. A um, couple of things you can do here is. It shows you your power you're using uh, at, at a specific time, which obviously is zero at the moment. Um, and then I know if you click through a few times, you'll see here um, the lowest amount of power. And I always like to show it's highest power. So you can always come along and see, has your rig spiked up beyond uh, an amount you or getting close to the amount you don't want to see. It's obviously an 850 watt PSU. You know, I'm going to plan to run this about 700 watts before I add more power, like another PSU, or I've got some some server PSUs over there, which I'm going to be doing a little bit later on to this rig. Um, you know, so again, I don't really want to see that getting close to 850, but it's just a good way. It gives me a little quick way to just double check, um, you know, if we have breached any of those sort of um, power limits that I'm, I'm looking to, to do. So I've got my windows on here. I've also got, so another thing is you want to obviously get a keyboard and mouse. Um, so you just want to put your USB into here. It doesn't really matter where you plug it in. Um, so it just, just need to yeah, make sure you do it the right way. Um, there you go. So we've got, we've got our USB in there, so we can then drive and, and you know do our BIOS settings. Um, yeah. So I think what we'll do is if I just put you guys up there a second. Still don't know how to use this tripod. It seems to have a mind of its own. So we'll just um, plug the power in there. So, you know, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that quite a lot um, when we are doing our first sort of power up and install. So, so yeah, so what we can do now, we can um, switch our PSU on. And look, depending on what motherboard you have, you might get lights, um, but this is a very, say, basic motherboard. And look, for mining, we don't need fancy flash RGB motherboards. Um, but if you have a motherboard, let's say, at least with an on-off on or reset switch, the on off switch will normally um, light up at this stage. Obviously, this $2 one, we're not expecting any light ups, so it's just more of a functional cable. But yeah, so look, we are ready as we're going to be now, guys. So I think what we'll do is, um, and I've got the TV plugged in. Let me just double check. Yeah, TV's in. Um, yeah, we are ready to go, guys. So, so I think it's now or never. Let, let's fire this rig up. So um, let's count this one down. So three, two, one. And guys, there we go, switched on. We have our CPU spinning, um, we have our GPU spinning, and uh, hopefully in a minute, we'll start to see some stuff up on the screen. So here we go, CPU memory change, please enter setup. So so let's do, what we're gonna do here is F1. So it's obviously just say, hey, there's some new stuff happening here. Um, press F1, and that should take us through to the BIOS. So it's... Um, yeah, you know, I, I always get a few, um, a little bit of elevated heart rate at this stage, you know, it's, um, you know, getting into BIOS is, you know, kind of a key step you want to get to, to make sure your, your hardware is working okay. So, um, so it says reboot and select proper boot device. So actually, I think what we're going to do here, um, what we're going to do actually is just unplug the, um, the SSD. We don't actually need that for now. And there's actually nothing on that SSD, so maybe that's looking for something to boot um, after BIOS. If I can do this with one hand, it's going to. Oh, come on, get out of there. Uh, oh, crumbs out. I just have to put you guys up here a minute while I try and get that out. Yes, yeah, so I think what we'll do, let, let's 
remove that SSD. Uh, and we will we'll press a key and we'll, we'll actually press escape because we we, we, we want to get into we want to get into the BIOS. So let's press a key. Press the key. So, oh, so, right, so actually what we'll do, so we'll, we'll, we'll just power off. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll hold this down for like five seconds. And that should, oh, I, I just pressed it once actually. So that should, I don't know if it's gonna reboot or, and then what we'll do, we'll press it again. All right, so welcome back guys. So yeah, we're into BIOS. Um, you know, I always like to have a quick look at the BIOS, make sure, you know, after five minutes of CPU, look, we're not putting much pressure on the CPU, but we just wanna make sure we're not seeing any crazy temperatures there. Uh, we can obviously see um, confirmation of what our uh, CPU is there, motherboard, um, and yeah, our, our RAM in there as well. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do very quick, quickly is just a few minutes um, BIOS changes before we go and load in Windows. So, so one thing, look, we'll go through to advanced, but we don't want to put the HD audio controller on, so we'll. We'll turn that off. Um, we'll go through to advanced settings then, across the settings here. System status, there's not much we want to do here. Remember we, we pulled out the SSD because it was actually, um, was didn't get some of the BIOS, but we're, we'll, we'll sort that out in a minute. But advanced settings, this is where we do most of our changes. So we go to PCIe settings. So um, the max speed here, um, look, I'm just gonna do gen one. Um, you know, so I think that we'll just start from there. If we need to get any faster speed, we can always go Gen 2 or Gen 3, but Gen 1 should be fine. So for the PCIe latency timer, I'm just going to leave that 32 for now. Um, sometimes I feel if my rigs are running a bit slow or a bit laggy, I will up this. Um, but there's no conclusive, uh, I guess, evidence for me. I can say, you know, put this up higher and you get faster speeds um, or less latency. So I'll lag. So, so we'll leave that at 32. One thing we definitely will do above 4G memory cryptocurrency mining. Yes, please. We'll have that one. Um, so we'll enable that one. Very important. Um, and then we'll just go down through, we're not going to change any of the ACPI settings, integrate peripherals. We've already disabled the HD audio controller. Uh, nothing here to do, nothing there. Power management setup. Uh, there's nothing I'm going to change here. Um, maybe someone will have some comments or feedback about doing some tweaks there, I don't know. So this is definitely an important one. The Windows 10 WHQL support, you need to move that from CSM to UFI um, and leave the rest the same. So yes, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm happy with those changes. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, hit F10 on my keyboard. So we'll, which will basically, so if we do F10, this will basically uh, offer me the opportunity to save these and I guess restart. So, so let's let's do that and we'll just come back into bios then so so that will just restart we'll press escape on the keyboard as that if, as that's restarting so i'm pressing escape now and we should come back through to the bios so, very good. so what we're going to do now is up here it gives you a very easy way to prioritize your your boot priority so at the moment we're just booting to BIOS, but we want to tell it now what we want to do first. So, so what we want to do is um, we are going to connect at, up our hard disk, but we're actually going to um, boot to our USB because that's where our window is. So what we're going to do, we're going to drag. Um, where's the USB? Right, USB to number one, and then we're going to put our USB hard drive, no, we won't that hard drive. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm now just going to re. Oh, so I'm going to do two things actually. So, is one we're going to get our um, Windows image, and we are going to put that in here. So let's put that in. So we're basically telling the BIOS now that when we reboot this USB is the priority to go and look for files in there and then that, that will trigger the Windows um, installation and because we're going to do that when Windows installs it wants to save the file somewhere um, so we want to put it onto the SSD so now we're going to plug the SSD in um, 
So and then so what will happen after we've installed Windows, we'll remove the um, USB and we'll make the boot priority the SSD because that's where Windows will then be housed. So so let's give this a shot. So, so yeah, so we've, we've prioritized USB and then the, the, the harvest, the SSD. So let's, um, we'll F10 it again. So it just shows you the changes we did there. Let's do yes. And let's see what happens. So it should, on reboot now, look to find the, the USB windows. So we've done it right we should get the um, the Windows um, logo come up and um, hopefully install Windows so yeah we'll just have to wait wait a little while this is live so you can, oh here we go so yeah there we go guys so it's now reading that um, USB and um, yeah so the, the, guys the, the, this is the, uh, the I guess the Windows setup so it's um, so yeah so what I might do is but it's just a few yes no boxes um i i might just run through all those very quickly and then we'll come back and we'll uh, yeah yeah i'll just do it very quickly with you guys here so. So, so english united states us um and you just and you just go through all these boxes kind of thing so so i do windows install now so what i do i'll do this um and We'll come back in three, two, one, and we should have just the basic windows um, to open for us. So, yeah, three, two, one. Actually, I thought I'd just show you here. I'm, I'm still just clicking the yeses and next in the windows install. Um, but you do get to this, and it says, um, where do you want to install your windows? So if you remember, that's what I said about we're now going to then put the windows onto the SSD. So you just, you just, it, just it would just find it there. That That's our, um, I think it's 240 gig. SSD, but obviously it's got I guess two two three allowable. There's probably some other space for um, directories and other stuff behind the scenes. So we'll just do next on there, and then yeah, it will start installing Windows onto, onto the SSD. So it's um, yeah, look, it's pretty straightforward. The rest of the steps through to it installing Windows. Um, so I won't bore you with, with watching this. It's it's literally just going to be loading up now. Um, and yeah, we'll come back in a, in a few seconds uh, when it's hopefully on. But I just thought. Um, be worth you just seeing that little step there with um, the SSD selection. I'm sorry to bring you guys back. We're still just going through the setup. So, um, like I said, there's all basically yes, no ticks on stuff. So, you know, what country you're in, what keyboard layout. So, I think nothing um, really I can give too much um, advice on. So, so, yeah, still going for some questions. Um, yeah, we'll come back in a, in a few minutes. Cool, so just getting through the last few questions. We're getting ready for you, so we're getting close, guys, to the uh, Windows screen. Um, I think it's doing a bit of work in the background still. Just thought I'd show you this so you know you are sort of on the right track. there oh there you go boom we're into windows it's brilliant so um, to be honest my advice would be once you get to this screen give it five minutes let let windows just get a feel for where it is what it's doing um, you know it might just do some initial updates um, installs so I would just recommend not jumping on and starting clicking straight away. Um, let let the windows. You can see, you know, it's it's working away here, doing some things. Let it, let it do that. Um, you don't want to upset these early sort of uh, stages. Um, you know, it, it might just lead us a little bit of instability or gremlins later. So, so yeah, let, let let it finish doing that. But what we'll do, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it five minutes. We'll come back then in five and. 
I'm just going to show you what I recommend is just some, I guess, basic Windows settings for mining. Um, but yeah, look, and, and again, I'd say in these early stages, um, you know, you can even press um, oh, uh, Task Manager and you can sort of get a feel for uh, more options. Just, uh, sorry, processes, you know, what, what it's working on. So you know, it's, it's going to be doing some work here, um, getting things sort of set up and ready. So, so for the sort of flashing screen, I'll try and fix that. Um, but yeah, so and you can see it's probably updating the um, drivers for the, um, for the GPU. So you know, you really you you see you can see Nvidia's there. So really, top tip for right now, just give it five, maybe even ten minutes. Just just let it do its magic. Um, it's still working away behind the scenes before you start getting in there trying to load up your mining software, Windows, um, you know, uh, configuration changes. So, so there you go. So you can see that that's working there. So look, guys. We're going to leave this for five, ten minutes, and we'll come back shortly, and we'll get on with some Windows configuration. So we'll see you in, yeah, three, two, one. All right, guys, so welcome back. Um, so, yeah, so look, we've let um, Windows just settle down, and I'm just going to run you through uh, exactly what I do to um, get ready for mining, and before we download um, nice hash to do some some, some mining. So, it's, um, so yeah, what, what we'll do... Maybe later. I'm just going to delete. Look, we're not going to be emailing, so I'm just going to unpin, unpin some of this clutter at the bottom here, um, and get rid of Cortana. So show Cortana. Get rid of that. Get rid of the task view, um, and then to be honest, probably what I'm going to do is we are going to turn off Windows Update um, to stop it from interfering from mining. Um, but what I think is always good practice is just to let Windows have its five minutes and let's just download all the updates um, that uh, may have occurred since um, I guess the you know the, the blank version of Windows that, that I've installed so I think always good practice um, and it normally works for me do these updates now and then I think your you know you, you, your Windows won't be fighting to look for updates and you know there might be some basic drivers just worth um, doing now so as I said we're up to date um, I think what might have happened is just while I was away, um, so I just went off to um, get some food and things. So I think it actually did an update. Um, so the fact that it says we're up to date, um, that wouldn't normally happen with a, a clean install of Windows. So um, you can also look at optional updates. There's um, Xeon chip here. So we haven't got Xeon chip in here. Um, we've got a um, Intel uh, i5 in there. So um, so yeah, so look, we're all good. So, but the, like I say, if, you, if there's a lot of updates to do, let them run, do them, restart the computer, and then you're good. So, what I'm going to do next then is actually go through and do some of the basic window setup. So, so I'll just go through slowly. So, the, the first thing I'll do actually is we'll go to services. So, if you go down to the bottom and type in services um, app, um, we'll just uh, we'll open that up. And we'll scroll right down to the bottom and we'll find the Windows update which is running. We'll stop that service because we've done the updates now. Uh, and we'll then we'll, we'll right click on it, go to properties, and we'll turn that off to disabled. We don't want to do any more Windows updates. We'll apply. Okay, perfect. So as you can see that it says disabled now. That's great. Cool. So then what we'll do, we'll go down to the, um, the search bar again. And we're just going to do some performance settings and power settings. So we'll type in, start typing in this, which is this PC. And then we'll right click on this. We will go to properties. Just make that a bit wider. So look over to the right here. And we're going to go to advanced system settings. Click on that, and there's a few tabs here: computer name, hardware, advanced, which we've clicked, and we're going to go into performance. So go into performance and settings, and we want to adjust for best performance. Obviously, we oh sorry, best performance. We, we're not worried about appearance or let Windows choose. We want best performance because we want to mine, um, you know, to our best performance. So we will press apply done and then we'll just go across here and go to advanced and we're going to go to virtual memory now 
If you start mining, um, you don't change this, you'll probably get an error in your software. Um, I think in nice hashes error, uh, I think it says hash 103 or hash 104, um, but we're gonna um, do what's needed before we get to that error. So basically, you see here is, uh, we have uh, 200,000 here. Um, we're gonna go here, oh, no, type of automatic, go to custom, and I'm gonna put, um, 75 oh I want you to do numbers like 75,000 up to 150,000 look high level um, the way this is working is if you have a 12 gig card for example or an 8 gig card if you had 10 8 gig cards um, that would be 8,000 megabytes so so say here I've got 10 8 gig cards that would be 80,000 um, initial size megabytes so so I'm probably a little bit low there but I'm not going to be putting on 10 8 gig cards right now um, but we'll, we'll stop 75,000 we can always lift it up if we need to so we just want to get that a bit higher if we just start with the base um, 16 megabytes by the time we get a couple of cards on there the the virtual memory will start to get used up so so this is just my personal preference base settings is 75,000 and 155,000 so we'll just click Okay, on that. Um, yeah, so they might need to do a restart, but we'll do that at the end. That's fine. Okay, cool. And we'll do okay. Uh, we might see. Okay, we we'll want to do that. Right, cool. So we'll just do okay. We'll restart later. So let's hang on to that. Um, we'll just come across to the left here and do power and sleep. Um, we just want to turn these off, so do never, yeah, never, never, um, and then additional power settings over on the right hand side then, and show additional plans, we want high performance. And we're just going to click in there, yeah, we just need to do never again in there. Oh, and just in here as well, there is actually a, so I should go back. So you click through here, change your pa advanced power settings. I don't think we're going to change it because it needs to be off. So you go to PCI Express, link power management, setting off. So, so just check that's off. Um, so that's fine. Yeah, we're good. Let's save changes. High performance, brilliant. All right, fantastic. Um, that's it. And then the only thing we will do um, later is we will go to security and we will put... Um, Oh, so I'll, I'll just show, I might as well show you, so if we go to Windows, it's all security and maintenance, oh, hang on, that's right, come on, let's go, security, Windows security settings, um, and let's go virus, so if we just scroll down here, um, just scroll down, Me. Uh, I think. Manage, yeah, so I've got to manage settings and then you want to do exclusions. So in here, whatever wherever you download your software, whether it's nice hash, um, if you've got Hive OS on your on oh no, you won't have Hive OS, sorry, if you've got T-Rex Miner um, or any other mining software on Windows, um, you want to get go and find a folder. Um, on your C drive, I haven't got anything at the moment, and you just want to say that's a safe folder, and that will stop Windows for trying to delete it um, and remove it, which does happen uh, quite often if you don't do that. So, but we'll, we'll actually do that later when we've done the software. So, that's all the, I guess, the base settings I want to do. Look, other things you can do as well, just to tidy up things. You can go to Add and Remove Programs, and you know you might want to just get rid of things like um, Xbox. You know, we're not going to do any Xboxing. Um, so you can just go um, uninstall. Oh, there's, like, there's some things you can't uninstall. Um, I guess un they're uninstallable. They're just on there. Like the weather, I, I don't really care about the weather. Although to be honest, <laughs> if it's getting a bit hot, I do care about the weather a bit when we're mining because we need to um, get things cool. Um, you know, Spotify. So it's worth maybe just deleting some you know stuff you're never going to be using if you're mining. So um, photos. Yeah, I don't want to do it. But yeah, you can just go through um, solitaire. Yeah got no time for solitaire when we're mining um, right okay cool so 
what we're going to do is now we'll just do a restart so we just shut down power and we'll do a restart cool All right and actually what i just show you we're just going to restart now um but what i show you as well hopefully is when we install windows one thing you do want to do is not um uh, put a password on when you log, log in um so you, you know you can give the computer a name i think i've named this one raven who we're going to be doing some raven coin there you go raven but i haven't um put a pass password to log in so so hopefully that will mean is if you have a, a restart while mining and um for example uh nice hash will, will restart the computer as an issue it'll restart your mod your your mining software will restart it's not waiting for a password to go in so that's good so um all right this is really good guys um so look what we'll do now is so another thing to do as well um i don't have any 3060 nerfed versions of 12 gigabytes here so we're not going to be loading um the special 4070.05 driver um so what we want to do now is actually one thing i'm going to do again this is just purely personal preference um i'm not a big fan of microsoft edge just you know some of the things i, I like logging through um, my gmail to access some of my um like nice hash things and that so uh i am just gonna just go away yeah. um i am gonna download google um because that's just where i'm accessing some of my own things that i say like google docs and things like that so um so we, oh sorry i'm like google sorry guys chrome i'm gonna, I'm gonna download chrome so I do Chrome, I don't want to like it. So again, I will do this and come back when it's installed because I don't think I need to give um, an overview how to download Chrome. So I'll just download Chrome and we'll come back in uh, three, two, one. All right, and we're back guys. So we got Chrome here. Um, so what I'm going to um, actually do now is go to default Go to default apps and just go down here and we're just going to say we want Chrome to be our default browser, switch anyway. I love the way that we try and say, oh, have a look, you know, try to stay with us, you know, don't go. So, um, so yeah, so we've got that as a default browser and I'm just going to delete off Microsoft Edge down here from there and we'll just add, we'll, we'll pin that to start and we'll pin that to taskbar so it's ready to go. Brilliant. Um, so what we will do actually another thing i'm just going to show you very quickly is i definitely recommend just for diagnostics um is download a tool called hw info um, so hwinfo.com let's try this a little bit smaller let's see that so hw so um yeah so we'll do a free download yeah you get a quite a lot of uh, ads so make sure you just get through to the installer um uh, free download here we go we'll do uh fat we'll do local us download it here um open it up yep install next so it takes literally you know less than a minute to get this on the computer and it's got some fantastic um you know analytics and diagnostics um yep finish yep we'll close that down we'll do let's well let's let's do let's do summary only so we'll just go to the summary this is not where i normally go but you can see here um just so so this we've got intel core i5 the 9400f um actually we don't want that just gives some like basic overview of what you've got. It's um, got a Kingston in there, you can recall. We've got the um, RTX 3070. So it kind of tells you, um, you know, about some of your base hardware. And basically, anything green means things are working well. If you do see any red here, it does mean there is potentially an issue with something. So, but what we're going to do is um, basically, I'm going to close that. Oh, um, and HW info. Let's actually add that to. Um, we'll pin that to taskbar. There you go. And I might 
just drag it on. Okay, so, I'm gonna, so let's open it up. We'll do sensors only this time. So turn to so sensors only, and this is this is the real the the meat and drink of this app, um, or, or yeah, a program. So yeah, so basically it goes down, looks at your system, looks at your, and what's great over everything it gives you like so virtual memory committed total amount of virtual memory, physical and page file committed operating system. So, and then it shows what's available. So it looks like we're using about half or, um, of our available, um, oh, so sorry, what's it saying? We use about 35%, so that's what's been um, used and, and that's what's still available kind of thing. So, so you, you can really, um, you know, see uh, if you're hitting any sort of thresholds and any, of your uh, CPU, RAM, things like that. So you can check out your um, CPU temperature. So our current, so current temperature is 29, and the, and the distance to I guess temperature max is 100. So it's saying we've got 69 headroom, which is great. So this is really good. Um, you know, the motherboard we're using doesn't actually have a temperature on it like some other motherboards. Um, so it's good to have this available, and then it will also go down like you know. Uh, lots of different things, they do some motherboard temperatures, volts, extra, and then it's got your SSD, and then finally, and let's make this a little bit wider, and that a bit wider, you can see here it's got the um, 3060 Ti, so this is good, you can see your temperature, your current hotspot temperatures, um, you know, things are obviously reasonably low, because we're not really doing much, um, the fans are actually spinning, so that is reasonably high for doing nothing, but the, the, span, the, the fans aren't turning on this one, so, um, yeah, so it's really good. I definitely recommend get this in um, your uh, your Windows when you're installing. So let's just close that down. So what we're going to do now? Let, let, let's um, let's get through and do some mining then. So um, so what I'm going to do is just log into Google. Um, I'm going to going to bring up Nice Hash. So just doing it in the Google browser. Nice Hash. Um, here we go. And I'm going to log in. Now, I haven't logged on this before, so it won't actually have any record of me. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this around while I um, put my. Actually, it's not. Yeah, it's not quite fitting in there yet, so it's a bit smaller. So, I'll just turn this around while I log in. So, I'll just you have a look at those nice GPUs over there for a second, guys. All right, good stuff, guys. So I've just logged into NiceHash. So I just logged into um, the, the the internet browser, um, and the first thing I do is let's move back to dark theme. It's a bit easier on my eyes, and I think we're actually better for the camera refresh rate. Um, so yeah, so basically, let's get rid of that. So this this is my overall, I guess, operation at the moment, and. Um, you see here if you have a quick look um, we're mining at 1.5 or just under 1.6 giga hash and we've got some um, rigs up and running here um, but let's focus on this rig we're doing um, so what we can do is we can go over to, to here and view download miner or add assets so what we do over here is we click on this now we are not going to be mining Ethereum because we are going to be mining Ravencoin, Conflux, uh, maybe some Ergo. Now the good thing is the older, I guess, version, the, the original nice hash miner, um, this will mine multiple coins and actually it will mine the most profitable coin at a time. So it will auto, or automatically switch to a more profitable coin. Um, so look, whilst nice hash might not give you the maximum percentage of payout if you mine with some other um, softwares or pools, just for ease of use, it is it is a good tool in in, in, in that sense. So, so let's go over to here. It'll give you the downloading kind of instructions. You can use either or, but I'll show you how I download it. So we go here. Let's go and download it. Um, please, well, let's put this using maintenance. That's fine. So let's just go to download this one. Uh, so I've got it on other rigs, so I'm comfortable what downloading here. Uh, I agree. Cool. Run nice hash miner. Actually, we'll turn it off because I don't want to jump straight into mining. Um, we just want to do finish and 
install. So it's easy as that. So if we come back to here now, there we go. Got a nice hash miner over here. Oh, okay. I don't think I'll hang on. So let's just do this. Let's set. Let's set. Okay, sorry, we haven't fully installed it. So it's um, login. Loading, please wait. It's fine. It's usually a little bit quicker than this, so... Ah, oh, okay, cool, here we go. So I'll just log into this again. So this is actually logging into the software to run on the computer, not, not the actual browser. So I'm just going to turn that away while I re-log in again. Um, so I've just logged in and it's just automatically... Uh, yep, yeah, we're happy to let this device do changes. On, on our computer, so that's fine. Uh, yep, we accept that, we accept that, it's third party software, so log in. Restart nice hash miner, so yep, someone has to do a restart. That's fine. Awesome, cool. Okay, cool, so let's what we need to do first when we're in a nice hash is go to do a benchmark so it's um plugins let's install some plugins here um now i think we may as well load all of these plugins because you you really want to benchmark all of plugins available um, so we'll install these plugins yeah install this one install this one install this plugin yeah so basically we're going to install all the plugins that are available so these are all the I guess um, algorithms and pools that we can um, access using nice hash and this is what I said around um, nice hash actually will so here we go what this looks so let's do this severe windows coin mine can't the X Trojan coin mine Cool. Okay. So what we do now? We go to benchmark, and we we're not we're not going to be mining on our CPU. We're just going to be mining on to start with one GPU. So we do start benchmark. So. So this might take about 30 minutes now, and it's going to benchmark all of the plugins that we've, we've um, now installed here. So, so that'll go away, and it and it will do some benchmarking. So, so that might take about half an hour. Um, it says mining there, but what it's actually doing, it's actually doing some benchmarking. So, um, we'll just leave that to do its benchmarks. So we'll, we'll come back in. Uh, yeah, three, two, one. Alright, alright guys, so um, 
But literally, uh, I've just watched the, all the 18 benchmarks run and they've just gone from like 18 down to zero. And uh, I think as you have just seen there, it looks like, yeah, um, NiceHash has started to mine. So it's obviously, we go to the dashboard here, devices, it's, um, is set to Kapow, which is the Ravencoin um, algor uh, algorithm, um, which kind of respect of Ravencoin is, um, you know, it has been even more profitable than Ethereum in the last uh, few weeks now and again. Um, so yeah, so that's also started mining. So it's um, so look, we've got a few tweaks to do, but you know, guys, that is great, um, great progress. You know. Um, if I think about start to finish, um, you know, if we've got a heads down, you could probably build your rig and mine probably within around two hours, give or take um, some time here and there and breaks, etc. So, it's, um, so guys, that is awesome news. We are mining. We are mining Ravencoin. Um, we are running at 24, um, 24 and a half mega hash, um, 69 degrees on the CPU, so which is quite high. We're going to do something else now. Uh, so I'll just show you up here. So, yep, yeah, we're mining there, guys. Happy days. Um, so a couple of things we want to do now um, is we want to kind of um, beef up our hash rate a little bit and get the temperatures down. So the tool for that will be MSI Afterburner. Um, actually, what I might do as well, we want to rename this rig. Raven, Raven. Um, like I said, whilst nice hash will look for the most profitable um, coin and algorithm to mine, um, I think it's generally going to be on Ravencoin most of the time. And I might even lock it down on Ravencoin at some point. So let's just save that to um, our rig called Raven. Um, we might just check the settings as well. Um, so you can put in like your electricity cost and stuff. Um, I think we're just going to change the currency to AUD. There we go. And dark theme. Lost our okay. Obviously, changing the dark theme <laughs> needs a little needs a reset. That's fine. I'll just start mining there. Okay. So, you can see what the AUDs now as we is in Australia. Um, there we go. Oh, it looks like oh, so so basically, when, when it was benchmarking to the algorithms, I did get a um, uh, Microsoft Defender blocking it so. Um, Oh, yeah. oh, it's, it's, it's erroring in there, so I don't know. That's fine. So I'm just trying to read the benchmarks. Get let's do that in the background. Um, we've renamed the Rig Raven, which is good. So if we go back across to here and refresh this, we should see now. Yes, so we've got a, a rig here called Raven, which is great. So it's, um, uh, there's a few rigs it says they're not on but that's only because I've had a few crashes and I had to reset the rigs up so it's actually got duplicate names even though one's not actually um, mining anymore so it's um, yeah so there's our Raven rig coming up this is benchmarking which it is so, so that's good um, yeah great so so let's go back here uh, I don't think there's anything else I want to change here for now I'm pretty happy with that um, all right so what we're going to do now guys is we are going to go back to google and we are going to do msi afterburner Download. Again, very quick download to do. Oh, 
I'm not going to do that Reaver tune, I'm just going to do the Afterburner. Yep, down like there. Yep, shortcut's fine, so it's just extracting. And again, it takes a minute to download this, so it takes no time. Just run and it's after going to finish. Awesome! So there you go, again, it takes a minute, and this is going to be a really uh, useful tool for us now as we are mining. So, so there you go, we've only got one GPU, um, and this shows us um, our GPU, I think it's core clock, the memory, volts, and temperature. Um, so a couple of things we really want to achieve here is we want to lower the temperature and we want to increase the hash rate. So I think as we look back to uh, where is it here, We're hashing around 24.2, we want to try and get that up close to the 30. So what we'll do, um, I've got a couple of presets. Actually, one thing I should have done is I actually should have is updated the NVIDIA um, drivers. I look four seven. Point four is not that old, but so but we, we can do that a little bit later. So so, um, so yeah. So what we'll do is so there's a few little instructions here on um, on on Afterburner, um, and what what we want to do is we want to go to um, we need to remember this now. Um, oh yeah. So basically, yeah, we've got core clock and memory clock. So so from recollection, what we want to do is my settings I've used before is up the core clock to a hundred. So I'll just type in that video uh, plus one oh oh and the memory clock to plus one thousand. There we go. And we'll save that. So I'll save that on settings number one. Save something. Oh Oh, hang on, it's in here. Plus one. Play around with our fan speed a little bit. So I want the fan speed up to 69. Just apply uh, that. Okay, so Oh yeah, so we're starting to lift up the, you see now we're going from 24 to 26, so that's good, so we're getting a bit more hash right there. Oh, yeah, so guys, so this is really good. Look, sorry, it's taken me a little while to get it there. Haven't used Aspen for a while, but yeah, we've got 27.26 there. Let's go back. Looks like we are running pretty smooth here. Um, now, definitely with. Um, oh, here we go. Connection loss, Kapow. Seconds. So I think it's just doing a little bit of work in the background there. Um, so yes, yeah, so guys, look, we've done some very basic settings there. Um, let's have a look here. So I do have another rig running with one card on a power 27.89, and I think I've got the same settings on. So, um, but that is a different card to this. So. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to take this as a 
um, successful with build. Um, we're up and running and we are mining. Let's just uh, come back over here. There you go. So we're mining away nicely there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, hopefully that's helped you guys um, from, you know, starting from scratch, um, coming up through to mining. And um, yeah, what we'll do, I think we'll, we'll wrap this up for, um, for this session. And um, yeah, what I might do is I might have a little play around with the um, with the MSI afterburner, and oh, actually that's good. Look, see there, we've got 28.32 mega hash. Um, so that, let's just refresh that. That's actually pretty good, actually. Um, so I interrupted my my wrap up. Um, let's have a look. Oh, it's not. Yeah, let's have a look. So, yeah, 27.7. Uh, so it might, might just be a little bit slow on the refresh, but yeah, it looks like we we're getting yeah, a little bit higher on the um, on the hash rate there. So yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna have a little play around. Um, I'm gonna look at some of the, um, the community um, posts and try and see if I can find what the optimal Raven coin um, overclock settings are. And um, yeah, we can do like maybe I'll come back with an update and we can see how we're going. So look, guys, the next plan is we are going to be um, taking this rig and we are going to be um, building a frame and then I've got a few other um, 3060 Ti cards that we're going to add to this. So I think the plan is to get about five cards onto a rig in the next few days and then we can really start to crank up that um, hash rate. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I um, hope this has been useful. Appreciate likes, comments, um, any feedback and um, yeah, we'll, we'll chat again soon. Thank you.